Okay, so in this video, we're going to go through some examples of sketching straight lines. So if we go first for y equals 5x plus 7, then you can go through the process of finding where it crosses the y-axis when x is 0, and so y would have to be 7. And when y is 0, then you'd take the 7 to the other side, so minus 7, divide through by 5, so minus 7 fifths. So x is minus 7 fifths. So that tells you that the line is crossing the y-axis in the positive and the x-axis in the negative. So it's going through something like that. There's the x minus 7 fifths and there's the y at 7. Remember, this line does not have to be to scale. So your uh, scaling new axes uh, isn't important. Um, obviously, you know, if you can make it more, look more accurate, then all the better. Okay, but that's the first one. Okay, then number two, y is equal to 4x minus 8. So if we go straight in, okay, then we can say that when x is 0, where it crosses the y-axis will be at minus 8. And when y is 0, we can add 8 to both sides, divide through by 4, which gets us 2. So it's crossing through at minus 8 on the y-axis, 2 on the x-axis. So something like this, there's minus 8 and there's 2. Okay, And that would be a sketch of this line, the y equals 4x minus 8. Now, number 3, y is equal to minus 2x plus 3. So it's going through 3 um, on the y-axis. We've got a negative gradient this time because it's minus 2. So if it's going through 3, it's got a negative gradient of minus 2. When y is 0, I could add the 2x to both sides, so I get 2x equals 3. Divide both sides by the 2, so I get 3 halves. So that must be 3 halves. Okay, so you can see that we can start to speed up um, with doing this. If you're not sure, if you're not um, confident yet, then think about um, just putting in when x is 0 and working it through, when y is 0, working it through, then plotting the two points, drawing a line through, okay? Whichever is more comfortable for you. Number four, we can see that when x is 0, we're going to have y is equal to minus 10. So that means it's crossing through the y-axis at minus 10, so somewhere down here. It's got a negative gradient because it's got the minus 7, so it's going to have to be going through something like that. There's minus 10. I just need to work out where it's crossing the x-axis. Now that's when y is 0. So 0 is minus 7x minus 10. Add the 7x to both sides and then divide both sides by the 7. So minus 10 sevenths. So you could see that, you know, cover up the y, then add the 7x to both sides, so 7x equals minus 10, divide through by the 7. Okay, so that's that one. Right, so number 5, y equals 6 minus 12x. So this one, we're going through uh, 6 on the y-axis. We've got a negative gradient, so quite steep negative gradient, minus 12. So where is it crossing the x-axis? So when y is 0, add the 12x to both sides, so 12x equals 6. So x is 6 over 12, or 1 half. So positive a half is where it's crossing the x-axis. Okay, so that's number 5. Right, now number 6, 2y equals 8 plus 7x. So, with these, we can't immediately read off the y-intercept um, or the gradient. So, you could rearrange it first and do it that way. I prefer not to. I prefer to just go straight in. What happens when x is 0? What happens when y is 0? So, when x is 0... Okay, you can cover it up, and we get 2y equals 8, so y must be 4. So it's crossing through the y-axis at 4. When y is 0, then I'm going to get 8 
plus 7x is 0. So if I take the 8 to the other side, minus 8 equals 7x, then divide through by 7, I get minus 8 sevenths. Okay, so negative crossing through the x-axis and then positive y-axis. So something like this. There's your minus 8 sevenths. There's your 4. Okay? And so that is uh, number 6. Once again, don't worry too much about the scaling there. Okay? It just needs to contain the important points. Number 7. 4x plus 9y equals 36. Okay, so for this, when x is 0, we get 9y equals 36, so y would have to be equal to 4. And when y is 0, we get x must be equal to 9. So it's crossing through 4 on the y-axis, 9 on the x-axis, so something like that. There's 4, there's 9. Okay, so... Once again, cover up the 9y for y is 0, so 4x equals 36, so x equals 9. Cover up the 4x, 9y equals 36, so y must be equal to 4. Okay? And that's number 7. Now for number 8, 5x minus 7y equals 140. So, when x is 0, minus 7y equals 140. So, y would have to be equal to minus 20. So, it's crossing through at minus 20 down here. Okay, make a little note. Covering up the minus 7y, 5x must be 140. So, what's that? 28. So, x must be 28. So, minus 20... 28, really it should be a, that's not particularly good, is it? It should be shallower gradient, but um, let's redo it. Yeah, we've got the time. Minus 20 and 28, we've got the time. Yeah. Just to make sure that it's clear that I know that 28 is larger than minus 20. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So that's number eight. Okay, see how much quicker this is than plotting. Okay, and it's telling me all the important information. Number nine, 6y minus 11x is equal to six. Okay, right. This one I might want to take a few more notes on. So, uh, when x is zero, Cover up the minus 11x, I'm going to get 6y equals 6, so y equals 1. So that's quite straightforward. But when y is 0, when y is 0, I get minus 11x equals 6, so x must be equal to minus 6 over 11. So that's smaller than 1. So it would be something like, something like that, minus 6 elevenths, and there's 1. Okay, and so that would be number nine. Right, so finally, number ten, we've got four thirds x plus five sevenths y equals two. So once again, I'd best take some notes on this one. So when x is zero, okay, covering up the four thirds x, I get five sevenths y is equal to two. So if you multiply both sides by the 7, and then divide both sides by the 5, y is equal to 14 fifths. So when y is 0, covering up the 5 sevenths y, I get 4 thirds x equals 2. So multiply both sides by the 3, then divide both sides by the 4, so 6 quarters or 3 halves. Okay, so 3 halves is uh, 1.5, 14 fifths is 2.8. So it's got something like that. That wasn't particularly good, but, but there you are. Like, I mean, it's, it's clear, isn't it? So uh, 14 fifths on the Y 
and three halves on the X. I almost missed it. Okay, so that is how you would do number 10. And that's how you can sketch straight line equations. You really want to get into the habit of keeping on trying them, uh, checking them via Desmos or Autograph or GeoGebra, and just keep on checking and trying these out, just so that you can kind of get used to sketching them reasonably quickly.